Yeah, so uh, this is Lily Chu uh, talking from the International Association for CFSME Conference, and I'm the co-vice president of ICFSME. We had a lot of fascinating research presentations. The sections I especially enjoyed were the plenary lectures by Dr. Fuge and Dr. Mella. I'm probably saying their names wrong. Dr. Fuge, right? Yes. And so um, it was fascinating to hear them talk about some of the metabolic pathways that they're working on and pinpointing it down to specific pathways rather than just general metabolic issues. Um, I also appreciated their work on rituximab and reporting on the results of that. The other sessions I always find interesting are the ones on symptom provocation and what people, uh, symptoms people experience and the uh, biological abnormalities they find when people are stressed under different physical conditions. We have a lot of fascinating work here and Dr. Tony Komaroff always summarizes our talks at the end and I'm hoping that if Tony is willing to lend us his slides we might be able to put some of them on our website later on. So please visit our website if you might have those. Uh, I would say uh, the take-home message is that, oh, there's hope for the future, really, uh, because there, I think there are more new things happening in this conference than any other conference I've been to. Um, new, new fields opening up, and Norwegians are right in there. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the highlights for me was the cyclophosphamide. Yes. I'm saying that, you know, yeah. the fact that there may be another broad, there may be a broad spectrum immune drug that could be successful in a, very successful in a subset of MACFS patients. And the drug is, you know, cheap. Uh, and, you know, it does have more side effects, but, but, I mean, it's just astonishing to think there's another rituximab like drug out mm. there. And I, I imagine if there's another, if there's, there's cyclophosphamide is a possibility that there are other possibilities. So it really, it really provides impetus to the idea that the immune system is a big deal in MECFS and it can be treated. Uh, the other, the other, of course, there was Fluga's, Fluga, yes, Fluga's uh, uh, talk, which demonstrated that they believe that the immune system is targeting the energy production system mm. in MECFS. And uh, so that was really big. Uh, I don't think anybody, because those are two such, two such major components of MECFS now. Mm. The immune system's always been big, and now we know the metabolism is really big. The ability to connect those two, that's really striking. And that mm. provides a lot of hope. You know, we can see more connections coming together. That's very encouraging. Yeah, and I must say, I was, and then from Norway again, the uh, the lactate. Yes. Uh huh. The lactate findings, the exercise lactate findings. Nobody has looked at lactate during the, and she did two day exercise test. Uh, so finding yet another uh, uh, impedance in the uh, energy production system during exercise, mm -hmm. that's just a great finding, you know, yes. that's just a great finding, you know, and kudos to her for, you know, going the extra mile and, you know, using the catheter and, and measuring that because nobody's, I don't think anybody's done that before. Mm -hmm. So that, that was really striking mm -hmm. for me. So the, uh, then there was the Shungu study, mm -hmm. which shows that, that doing such a simple thing as uh, providing NAC, n -cetyl Cysteine, I think, yeah. to the to which it, it may not it may not uh, help symptoms or it may. I just talked to somebody who said it definitely helped her uh, her symptoms, uh, but but may decrease the brain inflammation, neuroinflammation mm -hmm. in the brain. That's a great finding because you know. Certainly from a, from a personal aspect, I've been coming to these conferences for a long, long time, uh, and, and we've been trying to push exercise testing as a, as a component of, of understanding the illness for close to 20 years now, and, and uh, exercise test, 
test paradigm for um, a, a just slightly less than that. And, and what we're finally seeing is that people are not only buying into exercise testing to do elicit symptoms and that an appropriate way to study the illness, we were very pleased to see that a number of people are, are supporting the idea of a two-day exercise test to, to show uh, elements of post-exertion delays in, in chronic fatigue syndrome. And it's really exciting that, that some of the bench scientists now are starting to learn of um, other bodily processes that, to, to the symptoms that we actually elicit. This particular conference, uh, there's a lot more science going on, a lot more people involved that are, are career scientists rather than hobby scientists or physicians trying to do science, you know, while they're also uh, running a, a clinical practice. And so I think that's a very positive thing. Um, very impressive with the research that's happening in, in Scandinavia at the moment, and that it's being repeated over here at some major institutions. So I, I, you know, I'm hopeful in the next couple of years with the advances in technology and the ability to analyze vast amounts of data very, very quickly and very efficiently, we'll start to see the picture emerge of what is really happening with the illness. This meeting has had a, a quantum leap from the last one two years ago. I think we've got the, the rituximab study, and, and it's just blossoming as far as the metabolomic implications of it. That fits with other metabolome studies that were reported here the uh, gut microbiome studies, the uh, DNA analysis. Um, the MRI analysis that's all converging on uh, a key complaint that patients complain about, of energy depletion. And all of these signs are, science is pointing towards a problem in producing energy. The key is, at rest, you're okay. You do some activity whether it's work or mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, and then bang, the system can't handle it, and that's when you crash. You can't produce enough energy, and that's when you have your return of pain, of fatigue, of cognitive problems. Jason from Paul University in Chicago, and what was most inspirational to me was that there was an efficacy meeting that filled the room, and these were people who basically came together and said, we've had enough, we need to change things. We've been passive, we've been quiet, we've been obedient, we've been humbling, times are changing, as Bob Dylan said, and that advocacy meeting struck me as there is going to be a change. The change is happening after 30 years of disrespect. The advocacy community is coming together with a voice. Not always one voice, but that's the key thing. Their voice is powerful, their voice is strong. They filled the room with people who want change. I would say it is that the evidence became even stronger brain, the autonomic nervous system, immune system, and energy metabolism are all, um, are, are all not right in this illness and could explain, and in some cases do appear to explain, the symptoms of the illness. We now, we have an illness that is defined only by symptoms. And so the question that any doctor should ask is, is there any evidence of any underlying objective biological abnormalities? And I think after this conference and many that have preceded it, 
it's clear what the answer to that question is. There are many biological abnormalities, and what we don't know yet is what's causing them all, and which of them are most connected to the symptoms. Because once we know that, we may have a way of targeting treatments that make people feel better. And that's our Since you have to go south to Mexico, I know all the water and cook most of the food. I have a good bread to go and 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 have a good bread to go Det gör kvalitet, det var många prestationer nu och det har varit en del möter på andra ställen som är tidigare. Det syns det går framåt. Sakta man sig. Ingen, ting som är löst, men det går framåt. Mm. Något du syns var särskilt intressant på det som är presenterat? Det är sånt som jag tror ska sätta fingrar på och se att det här var något som är liksom förkänning. Men ja, det är summen av, summen av beslutningarna som vi Täcka lite genom rättning sen så då, kanske allt där. Det är positivt. Vilken rättning vill du se det här? Eh, Immunrespons står centralt. Eh, Energiomsättning i Sverige står centralt. Så är det på en bättre sammanhang mellan dessa som blir viktiga och åker ut. Mm. Så ser det visar en, en, en block i energiomsättningen som är kanske är förorsaket av immunresponsen. Det är det vi jobbar mot på lite annat. För det första så är det första gången jag är på detta möte. Så det var eh, intressant att se bredden i det som föregår internationellt. Ofta läser man artiklar som har med det att göra som man själv forskar på. Och det är eh, ganska krävande i sig selv, men å se at det jobbes på så mange ulike felter seriøst og mange grupper rundt omkring, jeg synes jeg er veldig oppmuntrende. Og det, det som jeg synes gjennomgående også var at veldig mange av presentasjonene var gode. Ikke, nok, ikke alltid didaktisk like gode, men innholdsmessig var mange av de gode. Og når alt kommer til alt, så vil all god forskning eh, munne ut i en sum som eh, ger oss ett totalbild av vad som sker med den sjukdomen. Det är väldigt komplicerat, långt mer komplicerat än någon tänker sig. Det betyder inte att nödvändigtvis att det inte är på något sätt ett sted i patientens sjukdom och bynder. Och gott är att det bynder ett sted och så tar oss alla patientens variabler och genuttryck i patienten var kommer in i bilder så att ända resultatet kan bli något olika för patient och patient. Symptombilder är något olika. Og, men det, det som uh, går igen er jo at, uh, som Øystein sier, at det er mye som taler for at immunsystemet er sentralt i dette. Uh, I hvert fall når det gjelder utløsning av sykdommen, og så ender det opp i et system som gir patienten symptomer som ikke nødvendigvis er immunsystemet i seg selv, men det er et resultat av noe som skjer i immunsystemet. Og det området vi har jobbet med på mekanistisk side i, i det siste, det er jo, uh, som Øystein sier, energi metabolismen, og interessant var det at tre fire grupper jobber med ting som minner om hverandre. Mm. Og gruppen fra Oslo også som gjorde målinger av melkesyre hos pasienter som, får, eh, som, som eh, belastes på sykkel. Og der finner man også resultater som passer veldig godt inn med de mekanistiske studiene vi har forholdet på. Så selv om man jobber med forskjellige ting, så peker det inn i mot. Eh, altså det, det henger sammen. Nå skal vi si noe negativt. Så er det vel egentlig det at uh, det er litt få studier som går på behandling. Overraskende få studier som går på behandling. Uh, det synes jeg var uh, nesten litt sjokkerende at vi får noe så lite. Det skiller seg vel litt kanskje at det uh, er mange på psykokunnskap og psykologisk organismen. Det er litt det som gjør at det blir litt uh, terapi i internasjonsstudier. Det kommer sikkert ikke det. Det kommer nok. Men likevel er det akkurat nå litt skuffende at 
det, det tar jo lang tid, for eksempel medikamentstudier. Det tar jo lang tid fra man prøver på de første patientene til et uh, prinsipp kan godkjennes offisielt. Det, det gjør jo at det er litt, litt langt frem for helt nye ting. Jeg tror at eh, hvis vi klarer å lokalisere obstruksjonen for medikamentet, så kan det være at man kan eh, se for seg eh, medikament som er direkte symptomerettet, og som kan pushe eh, symptomene litt i riktig retning. Men det ser vel forløpig ut som om at det kan, det, det kan bli relativt begrenset på endringer du kan oppnå med sånn type intervensjon. Det blir det, Og det er litt som har på sykkelforsamling, så går vi mot en bakgrunn for det er noen responsen. Det er mye lengre tid før de får respons, men så bra å se mye lengre, så han trenger nesten som skal gi noe som er rent symptomatisk. Det kan nok tenkes at hvis vi klarer å lokalisere nivået for hemmingen av energiskapskiftet rent direkte mer nøyaktig, så kan man kanskje se for seg å prøve å manipulere det på en effektiv måte, og det må vi vente med seg. Jeg tror vi vil se at du vil ikke finne en cocktail som hjelper alle, mm. men kanskje en patient har nytt av akkurat det, de stoffene, en annen av noe annet. Men det, det løser ikke det underliggende problemet, det blir en, en symptomatisk effekt som bare ja. kanskje en daglig tog. Jeg tror vel at vi kanskje har en fellestrekk i kolokalisasjonen. Det, det kan være, men... Det er ikke så grunn til å tro at det liksom er en penger det er en annen penger. Nei, men innenfor en, ja. en, en begrenset gruppe med det kan telle kosttilskuddet, hva man skal kalle det, mm. så vil det kanskje være at noen som har mer nytte av det ene enn det andre. Ja. Men det er ikke tilfeldig det som man kan kutte på for det, effekt. Det er også noe mm. som må sjekkes ut i studiet. Det er ikke noe at bare så det er å kraske i seg uten sant. Mm. Det er noe som må bli presset ut i tilfelle. Stå på nettet at vi anbefaler allergen nå, men det er ikke riktig. Det er sånn forstadium til som bruker sin hypogenolopsyksikesen, og derfor så har vi lurt på om vi skulle gjøre noe med det. Men det har ikke gjort noe studie på det. Det er ikke rett å si at vi har noe for det. På den andre siden så er det jo slik at eh, hvis en pasient bruker det og erfarer at det hjelper en, så er det ikke noen grunn til å ikke kunne gjøre det. Men det vi tenker er at det er en mulighet for at det stoffet eh, i, i det systemet det, det går inn mot er såpass sentralt at det kan godt være at stoffet kan ha effekt i begrenset tid, altså det er en justering og så hjelper det ikke så godt lenger. Han har på arbeidet i toleranse. Han har på arbeidet i toleranse.